So here we are in, in fabulous western Seattle. Sitting in silence. You know what would be, you know what would go good with the silence? What would go good with silence, Jeff? Rock and roll! Do you hear that? No, I didn't hear you. Much? I think something scratching. I think it's the beast. Woe to those sitting around drinking. For Rufus wrings his breath with wrath. <laughs> For he knows it stinks of meat. He knows your lap is hot. Let him who hath understanding reckon the breath of Rufus. <laughs> For it is a beastly breath. <laughs> you got it going. Uh, um, hey, welcome to uh, what appears to be perhaps some sort of a rock city uh, short sure or just reasonably lengthened <laughs> reasonably lengthened piece of media yeah yeah maybe if we do this one uh, people will watch it the whole way through yeah so uh, yes we're calling these pairings um, and tonight we have a pairing that is going to really be great for Everyone out there who likes um, Nwabum, uh, <laughs> three guitar players in one band, if you like that kind of thing. What are great, other great examples of uh, bands that have had three guitar players? Three guitar players. Yep. Almond Brothers? There's the Almond Brothers. Leonard Skinner? Yeah, I think Leonard Skinner, they had three after somebody died. Right. They probably had like five at one point. Who else? Uh, there's not a lot of three guitar player bands. We're forgetting somebody, though. Too Be much. Easy. I'm sure there's somebody out there. Who gets up and does like the... Scorpions? Do they, they only have two, though, right? They only have two. Okay, well, let's think about it. Because we're about to hear one that we didn't mention. Yes. Which is Iron Maiden. They have a new record. And... Um, so we wanted to pair that new record with a brand new beer um, that we found at the bottle shop called, uh, see you later, Rufus. Bye, Rufus. Um, Thanks for stopping by. Actually, go, Rufus, go this way. It's much easier. Thank you. Just careful. Um, You've been there before. Avery Brewing Company's The Beast, Grand Beast. Crew Ale. Looks delicious. We will try that while we listen to... These beasties. The Beast uh, of Birmingham? There you go. I just said that. I like it. I, I don't know if that's for real or what. I think that's, I think that's perfect. Um, anyway, we're going to play a new song off the new record called The Great Unknown. We did... Uh, er, oh, hit myself in the face of the record. We did a... Um, it's a large record. A uh, little listening earlier tonight. And uh, if we're being honest, we had kind of a hard time picking a song. But we'll talk about that after we listen to it. Yeah. Because maybe we'll feel differently after we have consumed some of the Avery Brewing Company's The Beast. We'll probably feel something. Right. Some difference. Right. So let's, uh, Hopefully. let's do this. Okay. So we decided that... Um... Oh, he's, he's dropping it. He's dropping the needle. I don't have time to say that we decided that this cover should maybe be one of these. These are cooler. Pick one of these, any one of these. They totally, it's a cover. I think they kind of biffed on that one. Anyway, take it away, man. Below. 
Where the future's open And the fear has grown And the path to follow To the great unknown Where the dark has fallen And the seed is sown
when the world has fallen and we stand alone. Well, <laughs> boy, that was quite a quite a song. <clears throat> <laughs> where do we start? Where, Jeff? Uh, where should we begin? <laughs> hmm. Well, the uh, the beast took us by surprise somewhat. The beast is a crafty beast. It's crafty, crafty. <laughs> let me let me tell you a little something about the beast. Yeah. It says here, and I, I'm pretty sure that Matt didn't uh, didn't take this into effect when he bought this, but it's I read a, the label. The beast is a seducer. It's accommodating, complicated, powerful, dark, unfiltered, and created to last the ages. Beyond this, it's futile to attempt to describe him. He will unveil himself differently to each of his followers. The mark is in his constitution. See? That sounds that all sounds pretty good. Okay, but then after that it says <laughs> Brewed with Rocky Mountain water, two row malted barley. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Honey malt. And imported Belgian specialty grains. And then after that, it gets even weirder. It names all the grains, and I can't pronounce them, so I'm not going to try. And then it gets into the brewing sugars. Okay, cut, yeah, cut to the, the good stuff. That's it. The brewing sugars of raisins, dates, and black strap molasses, followed by uh, some alfalfa honey. And then you bring in a little turbinado sugar. And you wind it up with some dark Belgian candy sugar. <laughs> and a hellion of a Belgian yeast so, strain. Yeah. Okay, so in a nutshell, um, when you pop the bottle that says the beast on it, and it has this like... Grand we'll take a photo of it, but when you see, you see this like grinning, teethy, toothy, evil creature... Yeah. You take, uh, you put your Iron Maiden record on, and it starts right. out, and you're listening it's to the song, which uh, was the Great Unknown, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about in a sec, and then you just taste this beer. It, <laughs> it is the worst thing. It, without, it's awful. Well, this is awful. You, beer. you had the, the toothy grin, <laughs> and you didn't know that you were gonna have to worry about tooth decay. <laughs> this beer, from the this beer is sugar. terrible. <laughs> it's got awful. <laughs> and then, but. Okay, but we could put that into the category of it being a very subjective sort of situation no. where people like different things, mm -hmm. and maybe it's just not for me. However, not when unlike you, an eighteen-minute Iron Maiden song. Fair enough. When you drink a beer called the Beast, though, mm -hmm. this is the opposite of what you would expect to yeah. it to taste like. Yeah, this is a little bit like fairy water. <laughs> <laughs> Or something. That's <laughs> right. It's not... Wait, E-R-R-Y or A-I-R-Y? Because it could work e e either way, either, really. Either way. F-A-E-R-I-E. -E. Yeah, it's like I, I just scooped my cup down into the Puget Sound. <laughs> the Puget Sound. <laughs> well, right when there was like one of those little mossy patches. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm. Little, little uh, <laughs> flavor. Oh, oh my geez. God. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like maple it's syrup. Tough. It's tough going. <laughs> it's like fermented maple syrup. It's, it's a little different. You know. Uh, okay. What about the record? What about the Iron Maiden? Well, I guess so. But we gotta say about the Beast. Like, no, it's got. It gets a zero or to point five for taste. Cause it's so weird. But and for something that you put in your mouth, you got you gotta love the bottle. The bottle's pretty cool. You know what though? If we're going on to the bottle, the creature is probably. Not even uh, visible to the camera right now. It's he's, really not rendered very well. Blacker than black. This was a just. He's need... coming out of the. He's looming out of the darkness. So speaking of bad covers, we were talking about this cover. This cover seems to me to be it's okay, iconic, yeah. stark. It gets the point across. But so, when, when you've got this Mayan uh, thing going on here with all these different cool things, now Derek Riggs is not involved any longer. So. No. And that's obvious, right? And, you know, to be fair, didn't David Lee Roth already do this cover? <laughs> Whoa! Eat him and smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, to go. So, but like, and this was probably, we were talking, this is probably too scary for a head like album it's cover. exploding, you know, you can't. Well, these days, so these days, mm -hmm. if you want to sell through at Walmart or whatever, 
You can't do that, Explo- right? Fiery explosions. But um, the first two Iron Maiden records were easily as scary as these. Definitely. Right? Plenty so glory. it just, I think uh, we've gotten soft. The world has gotten soft. And Paul Diano wouldn't have anything to do with any of it. He would just be like, we're using this yeah. one. He ripped out his and arm. If we, and if we don't, and first of all, we got to zoom in on it. None of this this Masters of Reality background stuff. We need to have like just this full on focus right here. Mm, yeah. Super gross. Yeah. And take him by the throat. That's what he would say. Yeah. I think, right? Right before passing out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, that's right. what he would say. Right, right. And then Nico would be like, Oh, come on, man. Hey. What are you talking about? This is great. But I designed that on me pewter. <laughs> So yeah, so the the cover, I think they they underachieved on that, and then uh, it is a weighty package. Great uh, records. We got high quality props vinyl. For three pieces of vinyl and something. You know, but that's all good. There's a song about Robin Williams on here. Mm. There's a um, an 18 minute song. I think it takes up a whole side. It's I, a little scary. I wanted to like this a lot more than I did. I really did. I wanted. I really tried hard to like this. Speed of Light, the song they led with, um, and their PR campaign is great. It's kind of riffing. We know Bruce was kind of dealing with some medical stuff during the recording of it, and that's totally admirable, and we're super glad he's going to get better and stuff. But I don't, I think I, like, it's just purely, like, if I'm going to listen to an Iron Maiden record, I don't know if I'm going to put this on over something that I already have. It Well, and it's, uh, I think maybe the problem with, Maybe the last few Maiden records have been like that, where there, there's a lot of good quality craftsmanship song writing, but yeah, but there's not a lot. There's nothing that grabs you, you know, like the right. stuff you listen to on the right. first five records or six or seven records. And maybe, maybe it's just us. Maybe we've already heard everything they have to offer, but there's new fans that are just hearing this stuff for the first time. And yeah, it's great for that. I mean, it's still Iron Maiden. Yeah, you give it that. It's it, hard for me to evaluate it because I've heard it. All. And to be fair, um, you know, maybe uh, how many times have you, you know, maybe repeated listenings? There's a lot there, so maybe right. something will will jump out. Yeah, it's a grower. Later. That's what you're saying. There you go. All maybe right, it's got so potential. I I think I'm gonna give it a. Uh, what's our What's our system? Uh, fists. This, five fists. The five fists. I'm gonna give it three fists. Three fists. Yeah. Is that now? Did you just give it three fifths? Not three fifths of, of a, a fist. fist. No, five fists. I'm giving it three fists three out of five. Three fists out of five. I'm giving it possible. Yeah, two thirds of a fist or two. Like that. I don't know. No, that's not two thirds. You gave it three fifths. Okay. No. Yeah. 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 I did. You'd have to give it four sixths of a. <laughs> I just gave it three fifths. Okay, all right, all right. I was just checking. And yeah. Okay. So what did you give it? Well, um, I I'm gonna give it. Um, well, hell, I made it up. I'm gonna give it three fifths of fifths fists. Three fifths of three, a single fist. I'm gonna give it three point five fists. Oh. Okay, cool. Because it's a grower. So if you average it out, we basically it's three. There's a lot of guitar solos. I like guitar solos. Yep. I'm going to go with that. It sounds good. I, I miss Derek Riggs. I miss, um, I miss, you know, um, heavy metal. There's not a lot of heavy metal on this record. It was pretty, yeah. like, mellow and thumping along. And I think it's just, to me, and so, I forget who it was. Oh, it was Schenker. Right? He was talking about um, how he went to see some other old band of his or something, and he was trying to be political or whatever and not totally diss him. But he said, you know, like, they just seem like they are really low energy. And I know every year that I get older, I feel a little bit lower energy, and I'm not mm-hmm. expecting these guys to act like they're 20 or feel like they're 20, but you can hear them, and they don't sound energetic. Yeah. Right? It's a little bit... The, the writing is, is thicker, though, you know, like they like they do a lot of. Hold on, let me see. Segue kind of goes with the, with the beer. There's a lot there, not always to your liking, but um, but yeah, I think I think they're maybe they channel their energy into more complex writing. Okay. 
I'm gonna cool. go with that. But the, yeah, there isn't there. The there's not a, like a riff that comes out that's you know like number of the beast. You know, three point fifth fifth fifths. I'm gonna give it yeah because I think it'll it'll maybe stand out. Okay. There's something so, will come up. Uh, pairing. But I'm gonna give the beer. Uh, Iron Maiden. I'm gonna give it. A, New album. I'm the gonna Book give of it a Souls. One point five. Song. The Great Unknown with um, Avery Brewing Company's The Beast, which we did not like at all. But I'm sure somebody who likes beer that tastes like figs and <laughs> chocolate and black strap, whatever, <laughs> shat. I'm sure you will love that beer. Yeah. It's, it's going to be wonderful for you. Yeah, knock it back, candy beer lover. Thanks, mm. thanks for checking in. Mm. I'm not sure Iron Maiden needs three guitar players. I'm concerned about that. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I think they were going to boot that guy to the curb, you know? Jens or Jans or Hans or mm -hmm. Jimins. Yeah, Gers. German Gers. Can we get just.